Atlanta, and I have a brother that I never met, and then there's me, and then I have another brother. The one that we never met, met, we know that his name was Robin. And when I lived with my dad in Leeds in the 1980s with Patrice and the gentleman that you see here, uh, my dad showed me a picture of him and said, that's number two. And we said to him, well, where is he? He said, he's in Denmark. And we said, well, what, are we going to meet this guy or what? And he just mumbled and left it to whatever it was. Um, so my younger brother and I decided to look for him. Uh, probably over the past seven years we've been looking for him and we couldn't find him. On the day my dad died, March the 16th, um, I was actually talking to uh, Annie Domingo, who I'd never met in my life, but I was talking to her on the uh, internet and uh, I got a call from my mum saying, it, it doesn't look good. Your dad is in the hospital and it really doesn't look good. And so I had to say to her, because uh, she was going to go in October and she was asking me for his address. So it was a shock to her and a shock to me and um, my dad died on the 16th of March. Two days later, I don't know why I did it, but I put up on his Facebook page, does anybody know where Robin is? And I kid you not, six hours later, somebody replied and said, I believe you are looking for Robin's hand rich. And then two hours later, Robin's hand rich said, hello, uh, it's me. I believe someone's asking for me. And so I emailed him and I said, oh, Robin, uh, my name's Nadia and um, there are a couple more of us, just in case you, you were wondering. <laughs> Um, and we met up. I went to the funeral, I came back. When I came back, he called and he said, I'm coming. And we met this brother that we've never, we never knew him, we never seen him, we met him. This brother of ours, Robin, was born on the day my dad died, on the 16th of March. So this year he said to me, now my birthday is, is going to remind me that I have a new family and that my dad who I never met died. So that's the first story. The second story was after my dad died, um, after the funeral, etc. we pretty much came back to England. People kept saying to me, well, what are you going to do, Nadia? What are you going to do? You wrote a book, you know about the arts. What are you going to do? And I thought, well, I'm going to be damned if I'm doing anything. What did he ever do for me? My brother brought me up. And people kept saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And I thought to myself, I can't take this anymore. And I spoke to a friend, and a friend said to me, Oh, Nadja, do you remember when my mother died? You said to me, speak to your mother, because that's what we do in our culture. We speak to people who passed away. She said, I spoke to my mother. Do you remember that phone call? I said to you, everything's so much better now I've spoken to her. She said, well, why don't you do it to your dad? She said, you need to tell him. If he's as arrogant as you say he is, as if he's as egotistical as you say he is, then trust me, something will happen. So I did that day in the bedroom. I said, you know what? I said, I don't like people asking me what I'm gonna do for you. I really don't like it. So if you want something to happen, if you want something to happen, then you are gonna have to do something about it. You always going on about the ancestors when they die, they help us, blah, blah, blah. Well, you're dead now. You do something about it. The next day I got an email from a girl called Olayanka Brendan Randall. She said to me, oh, no, do you know the news coming up? Why don't you contact Yusuf Mujalo? So I said, okay. So I just emailed him and then he, said, he emailed me back. He said, call me. And I called him. He said to me, oh, what, we're going to do this. And uh, you don't have to worry about anything. I got it. I got it. And then he introduced me to Rita Ray. And she said, oh, yeah, we're going to do this. And you don't have to worry about anything. We got you. And here we are. So um, I have a... a, a that was um, put up on Facebook by uh, one of the students in McKenney who wrote this and it's called A Letter to um, Yunusat Madumadi. I have been searching for you everywhere. I went to the books room. I only saw your legacy and then realised your presence and sentences. Permit me, oh dear Maddy, to stand on top of your pen as you swing your hands on the white sheet. Let me dance to the truth of life. The truth, as you always say, make we talk and fine, not to our follow. I went to the radio, but I did not see you there. All I'm hearing is the obituary. Why did you leave before your death? Maddie, I am optimistic that you will never die. 
Your knowledge was a pool that I swim in with others who know you from the heart. I went to the universities in Europe, America, Zimbabwe, Nigeria, Sierra Leone. I did not see you there. What I saw were the brains you were living in, the voices speaking their own voice, but the words are yours. I went to the stage, but I could not find you. What I saw were your footprints on the floor, stamped in wood. A great dancer, dancing in desperation on behalf of his people. I went to the theatre house, I did not see you. All I heard were the drums playing the rhythm of your image. Maddie, where are you then? Because I know you are not dead. I went to the house of justice, I cannot find you. But the injustice today has overcrowded you. I went to the prison, oh Maddie, you're still not there. But I saw the strain of your sweat mixed with wrath and anger and tears for justice. I went to your exile. You are missing. What I saw was your stubborn perseverance. Of course you are not dead, and I believe it. So where are you these long nights? I went to the horizon, oh Maddie. What I saw was your back. Why did I see your back and not your face? Oh yes, I now understand. You are still on your journey. Abefo. Yes, go forward, go forward. You were trying to tell me that I should follow your back to go forward. Even as you continue to move forward, please tell Shaka Stevens. Now his absence seems to be his presence in our land. I will write you again about that. Goodbye for now, Jonathan Thompson Pelham. I don't know this guy. He's on Facebook if you want to find out who he is. But he put this up and we thought it was really amazing. Okay, now I'm going to introduce to the stage Miss Annie Domingo, who's going to read something special for us.